Welcome to the tutorial for the Smart Simple Online Reporting System for the Smart Fund. This tutorial will provide you with an introduction to the Smart Simple Online Reporting System, which is where you will complete and submit both the progress report and outcomes measurement and evaluation frameworks for the Smart Fund. This system is supported by both PC and Mac computers. For Mac users, it is recommended that you use Mozilla Firefox as the Internet Explorer. Before we get started, it is recommended that you have the data ready for reporting, so the data you'll need to report on actual outputs and outcomes and any electronic copies of data collection tools that you use to collect the data. All right, to get started, you will need the username and password that was sent to you, um, along with a link to this login page, which is vch.smartsimple.ca. To get started, use your username and password once you log into the system for the first time, you're going to be prompted to change your password. You can update that to anything you like. And if at any point you forget that password, you can just click here and a new password will be sent to you. So let me log in using a test account that was set up and we will walk through the system. So this is what your homepage will look like for the Smart Simple reporting program. Up on the left hand side it welcomes you by name and then on the right hand corner you've got the homepage button and the logout button. There are a few instructions here on the front page uh, notifying you of any due dates for reports. Um, below that you'll see there are two main sections to this system. There's the reporting section and below that the account management section. You'll see on the left hand column is the same two sections, reporting and accounts management. You can navigate through these sections either on the left hand column or by returning to the home page at any point. You will see that the reporting section has four steps to completing your reporting process um, along with a a report status section and a past report section. We will go into all of these sections in detail following this. And below that is the accounts management space where you can change your password at any time if you like. So going through the four steps of the reporting process, I'm going to go through them in sequence, but you do not have to do this. You can go through them in any order that you like. So starting with step one, this is where you can update the primary contact information. Your name and contact information is already in the system, but please edit if necessary, as well as make sure that your job title is up to date. Just hit save and you can move on to step two, program details. In step two, you'll find other program information, so including program name, program address, as well, please add contact information for the executive director and the financial contact for your program. Below that, you'll see the Smart Fund lead contact information. This is the person you contact if you have any questions about the content of your reporting. The next tab is the Program Purpose tab. This is where the program goals and objectives and situation assessments are now kept. They used to be part of the outcomes measurement framework, but now you will find them here and they will be automatically input into your progress support, which you will see later. Please update these as necessary and then click save draft or save when you're done. The final tab is the funding history tab. You cannot edit any of the information here, but you may find it a useful reference to look back on. All right, moving on to step three, the progress report. As you move into the progress report, you will see that here at the top are the program goals and objectives and the situation assessment that are edited in step two. Below that are the tabs to navigate through the progress report. And if you like, you can hide this top section just using the hide program information button so that you can easy, have easier access to the tabs below. You can navigate through the tabs by clicking through the tabs, or you can also use the previous and next buttons that you'll find along the bottom. As you navigate your way through the system and are inputting data, be sure to click the Save Draft button as you go. 
The questions with the red asterisks are required questions. If you try to submit the report without having completed one of these questions, you will receive an error message and be prompted to return to the appropriate tab and question to complete it. You will also notice these little information icons as you move throughout the system. Just hover over the icon and it will provide you with some information about that specific question or section. I will now walk you through a few of the specific tabs in a bit more detail. In the Achieving Outputs and Outcomes tab, you will notice that the proposed outputs and outcomes from last year's OMF have been automatically populated here, so that all that is required is for you to report actual values and provide comments where necessary. For example, if there is a large discrepancy between proposed and actual values. For editing your actual outputs, you just go to the Edit button to the left-hand side of each row and it will take you here where you will see the proposed outputs as well as a spot for you to enter actual outputs and provide comment if you like. Hit the Save button and then return to the report. It is a similar process for reporting actual counts for your outcome indicators where again you click on the Edit button to the right of the row. This will take you to a pop-up box where you will see the outcome, the associated indicators, and a space for you to provide actual measures. As well, you need to provide the number of individuals that data was collected from. You can see a definition at the top of the page to help you with this. Once you've entered your data, hit Save and close the window. On the second screen, you can add any appropriate comments, hit Save, and return to the report. In the Partnerships tab, you will see an Add Partner button, which will take you to a pop-up box. Here you provide the names of your program partners, define the purpose for the partnership using this drop-down box, the definitions are above to help you with this section, and then as well provide the details of the partnership activities. You can continue to add partners until you're done, or delete partners if you need to. Hit Save and close the box. This is a similar process in the Funding Sources tab where you will see a Add Funding Source button. In this pop-up box, you will notice that your funding amount from the Smart Fund has already been entered in the top of the chart. You can click Add to add a new funding source. So for example, let's say the City of Vancouver. You define the type of funding, so it's a municipal funder. State whether or not it's a new funding source, so yes or no. Let's say yes, this is a new funding source. You've never received funding of this kind from the City of Vancouver before. And then just enter the amount. You can continue to add funders. Hit save when you're done. And you'll see, saved successfully, close this window. And the page will update with your total funding amount. This Additional Files tab allows you to upload any extra files that you think helped demonstrate the achievements of your program in the last year. You can update files or provide links to um, appropriate web pages. This final tab is the Feedback tab. If once your progress report has been reviewed by the Smart Fund staff and there is a request for revisions or additions, the report will be returned to you and detailed feedback will be found here that guides you to the areas of the report that need clarification or edits. If you would like to print a copy of your progress report or save it to your computer, you can do that here on the print report button. Click that and a pop-up window will come up. You can print this window as is or you can export as a PDF. Once you have completed your progress report and are ready to submit, you can do that here, but you may also want to go on to step four before submitting to update your outcomes measurement framework. This means you can refer back to the progress report to give you some ideas about what may or may not need to be updated within your OMF. When you click on Step 4, you will see that your last year's outcomes measurement and evaluation frameworks are already here ready for you to make edits. Edits are made in the section below the OMF and EF. 
in these two tabs, Outcomes Measurement Framework tab and Evaluation Framework tab. Um, as you make edits down below, you will see them reflected in the frameworks above. Similar to the progress report, you may find it easier to hide this top section um, so you have easier access to the edit tabs below. In the outcomes measurement section, you can edit inputs here at the top, followed by a section for activities, outputs, and short-term outcomes, then intermediate-term outcomes, and long-term outcomes. And you would just choose the activity, output, or corresponding short-term outcome that you like to edit, and hit the edit button beside. It takes you to a second window where you can go ahead and make edits, hit save, and go back to the original report. Similar to the short-term outcomes, you can edit your intermediate-term outcomes here. So let's go in and do that. Just to demonstrate how the system works for you, let's delete this one and make up some exciting new outcome that we are going to save. This is our third intermediate-term outcome. We're going to go back to the system. So you will see that the system has inserted this exciting new outcome here in the OMF, but it, what it's also done is taken it and auto-populated it into the evaluation framework as well. So now let's update the indicators associated with this new outcome. So in the evaluation framework edit tab, we would go and find that intermediate term outcome that we've added here and click on the edit button beside it. In the pop-up box, you can simply make edits to the information that is already there, or if you wish, you can completely delete one of the entries and then add new indicators and associated collection methods, etc. Once you do that, hit save and close the window. Like the progress report, you are also able to print or export a copy of your OMF EF here. Once you have made all edits to your outcomes measurement and evaluation frameworks and you're ready to submit, you can do that with the submit button here. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you go back to step three and submit the progress report as well. Once you have submitted both reports, you can track the progress of the reports in the report status section here. You can see that I have not yet submitted either of the reports, as they say, incomplete. The report status will go through a variety of stages um, from submitted to under review to approved. You can track that progress here, but you will also receive an email each time the report status changes. In the My Past Report section, you will have access to any reports that have previously been submitted to the Smart Fund, whether that be outcomes measurement frameworks or past progress reports. So that was a brief introduction to the Smart Simple reporting system for the Smart Fund. I hope you found it helpful. Um, please note that you do not need to complete all of this reporting in one sitting, but you can log in and out of the system as necessary. If you have any questions regarding the use of the system, please contact Eduarda Donovan. Her contact information is here on the homepage. And also, if you have questions regarding the content of your report, please refer to your Smart Fund contact lead and that information is found in step two, the first tab down here at the bottom. So best of luck with the Smart Simple system and we look forward to receiving your reports.